Hi, my name is Diva Fagan. I'm the author of The Mirror Wood. The Mirror Wood is the story of Fable, who is a farm girl cursed to have no face of her own. In order to stay alive, Fable has to steal the faces of others and lives in fear of being executed by the fierce blight hunters who see her as a threat to the entire world. When her curse brings danger to her beloved family, Fable takes charge of her own fate and enters the magical thorn encircled mirror wood in order to break her curse. But to do so, she needs to destroy the demon prince who has taken over the lands within the thorns and she needs to wake the true prince from his magical slumber. But the more Fable explores the mirror wood, the more she discovers that nothing is quite as expected. Enemies may become allies, wishes can be more dangerous than curses, and happily ever after isn't always what you think it is. So my story has a hero who enters a magical realm that's surrounded by thorns in order to wake a sleeping royal and break a curse. Does that sound familiar to any of you? Does it remind you maybe of a famous fairy tale that you might have heard of? Think for a minute. So if you were thinking of Sleeping Beauty, then gold star for you. That is indeed one of the inspirations for the mirror wood. So yeah, that's one of the coolest things about telling stories is that we can take something familiar and change it and just make it new and different and tell it in a way that only we can tell it ourselves. So let's try it together with a different fairy tale though. How about this one? Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack who got sent to market to sell his cow. He trades the cow for some magic beans which grow into a giant beanstalk that he climbs and reaches the home of a giant. He steals a bunch of treasure from the giant and then when the giant comes after him, Jack chops down the beanstalk and the giant falls to his death and Jack and his family live happily ever after. How could we retell that story in a new way? And you're gonna try and do that along with me. One way we can change it is to change who the hero is and have them be someone other than a farm boy named Jack. Think about that. Who would you make the hero of your story be? And what would be their name? Where do they live? Who are they? Think about that. Pause the video if you wanna write it down and come back when you're ready. So my answer is that my hero is going to be a girl named Jackie who lives on a space station in the future. Here's another way we can change the story is to change some of the distinctive things that occur in the story. So instead of having our hero trade a cow for magic beans, maybe they can trade something else for something else. So think about what kind of thing your hero might have that they would trade and what would they get for it. So my answer is that in my story, Jackie will trade her favorite robot for a set of plans to make some sort of mysterious gizmo. Okay, our third change. Let's think about what our hero does with this item. Is it something that your hero is going to use to travel somewhere the way Jack travels on the beanstalk? And if so, where do they go? Okay, so my change to my story is that Jackie builds the gizmo and discovers that it's a rocket ship, which she can then use to fly to Mars. So then the fourth way that we're going to try and change and retell the story of Jack and the Beanstalk is to think about having a different ending. So instead of having Jack steal from the giant and fight him, what else could happen in the end of the story? Again, pause the video if you want to think about it and come back when you're ready. My change for the story's ending will be that Jackie will discover a shipwrecked alien on Mars, and she will use her rocket ship to save them. This is an example of how you create a fairy tale retelling by taking an existing story and adapting it and changing it in new and fun ways. I'm going to end now by reading a little bit of the mirror wood. This scene is from near the beginning of the book, just after Fable has had a close encounter with some blight hunters, and she's gone out to the edge of her family farm with her cat, Moth. Why do you wish to change what you are? asked Moth. I let out a long sigh. Oh, I don't know. Take your pick. The fact that I'm a face-stealing lamprey sucking the life out of my family? That I almost got caught by hunters last night? The fact that everyone else is going to grow up and leave and live their lives and I might never find out who I could be if I wasn't blighted? I hadn't meant to say that last part, but it surged up from my chest, the fiercest and most sharp-toothed of all my fears. I drew in a ragged breath, fighting to keep from falling even further into the bleak pit yawning open inside me. I appreciate the confession, said a girl's voice from somewhere behind me. That's going to make this so much easier. I spun around, just in time to see the hunter's apprentice, Vicarax, step from behind a stand of oaks. In one smooth motion, she drew her sword, brandishing it between us. Now, she said, I suggest you surrender. Moth growled, are we running or fighting? But my mouth couldn't move. My feet were stones, sunk deep into the loam. 
All I could do was stare at the tip of Vicarax's sword, my insides quaking. My parents had warned me time and again what would happen if the hunters discovered me. My mother had even once taken me to see the poor mangled remains of a man cursed with ears like a bat. The hunters had killed him and set him at the busiest crossroads as a warning. No doubt they would do the same to me. And don't bother running, drawled the girl. I tracked you here easily enough. She tracked me, like a beast, like a rabid wolf. That was all I was to her. It was unfair. I wasn't evil, dangerous, yes, but I'd be no trouble if they would only leave me alone. Why surrender, I said, abruptly furious. You're just going to kill me. Something shifted in the apprentice's eyes, a flicker of doubt. Then she shook her short black hair. Anything blighted must be destroyed. It's the only way to keep the curse from spreading. Of course, that's how she'd see it. But I wasn't giving up that easily. Or maybe you're just lazy, I snarled. You'd rather murder people you're afraid of than try to break the curse. We have tried, she snapped back, as if my words stung her. You heard what my father said, and he's one of the best hunters in the order. Not good enough to break the curse, though, I said. You think you could do better? scoffed Vicarax. You're just a blighted little farm girl. Her words kicked me in the chest. She wasn't wrong. I'd spent most of my life no more than a mile from the same cozy house, surrounded by fields and dells that I knew better than my own heartbeat, trusting my parents to keep me safe. They hadn't coddled me. There was no room for that on a farm. But my knowledge extended only to things like how to wrangle a truculent ewe and what flowers made the best yellow dye. I was just a blighted little farm girl. A soft warmth curled around my leg. Moth pressed close, his fur fluffed in fury. If only I could be so brave, so fierce. Was it so impossible? There were plenty of stories about everyday people like me doing grand things. Assistant pig keepers who saved the realm. Hat makers who ended wicked spells. If they could do great things, why couldn't I? I'd spent the last 12 years letting other people protect me. Maybe it was time to try saving myself. The mirror wood wasn't that far away. Maybe a farm girl could break a centuries-old curse. I bounced on my toes, quivering with the possibility. Then everything would change. I wouldn't be a danger to my family. I could finally start living my own real life. I stood straighter, summoning my fury and fear and despair and braiding them tight into something like hope. Yes, I think I can, and you can't stop me. So that's a little bit of the mirror wood. And of course, if you want to read the rest, you can see what other kinds of fairy tale elements you find in the story. Thanks for being here and happy reading. Bye.